Hi, welcome to Zenzero Electronics about electronics. Today we are gonna talk about the second amp I built. It's uh, wait for ah, ah. it's this bad boy here. I call it the beast. And uh, why is that? You ask. If it's a small combo, it's because yes, four output tubes and two preamp tubes and a really massive transformer. This amp sounds pretty rad, but yes, one major flow. So today we are gonna go over it and uh, I'm gonna explain you a bit about the circuit we're gonna see how it's built inside and we're gonna try to fix what I think is the main issue with this amp but before all that let's have a tone test so I can show you where the problem lies <laughs> So what I would like to do basically is getting more range from the gain control, getting some volume already starting in this area and then when we get up over 3 o'clock I wanted to really get some crunch possibly. This amp has three preamp stages so I would expect that to be possible. This amp, as my previous amp, the MAT, which I did a world video about, and you can see here, this amp started out as a Fender combo, the cheapest 10 inch speaker Fender combo I could find on Yahoo auctions. Probably pay like 20 bucks. It was sold as junk. When he arrived, he actually worked and he was a Fender combo from the 90s. Anyway, I got it out to build my completely valve amplifier. The idea was to get like a Marshall -y tone out from this small combo. And to do that, I wanted to have for output valves. After building it, I realized it was way too dangerous to have all these tubes in this position. So I added the steel bar as a safety measure, which I got from a broken saw, I guess. And another thing I added, somebody will call this blasphemy, but I have actually a fan. So let's open this beast up. One funny thing, I had to move back this screw and this one too because the power transformer was so big it wouldn't let me push the chassis back all the way. So here are the guts of the beast. As you can see, I used all kinds of different construction methods and I will go over the build really soon. 
But first of all, to explain what's really going on, I will have to explain you some of the design choices behind Bizamp. There's a time and a place for everything, and it's called college. I already had the mutt, which sounds pretty good, and it's a single-ended Class A amplifier. Most people will tell you that's the best sounding amp ever, but what I wanted to have also was a multiple tubes output amplifier with a phase inverter. This kind of amp also gets lots of praises for its warm sound, depending who you talk to. So what I wanted to have basically is a super low power JCM 800. I wanted it super low power because I wanted to be able to use it at home. So I went searching for a tube that would give me really low power while still being a power tube and a pentode. Sorry. Here is what I found. The 6CL6. Not to be confused with a 6L6. From what I understand, the 6CL6 was a popular pentode used in TVs. Really low power, as you can see here, for an amplifier in Class A, it gives 2.8 watts, which is about half of what you will get from a EL84. Also, the 6CL6, while not in current production, I got a bunch of them for really cheap, so you have the advantage of being able to use a power painted a vintage one in your new build. Of course, you have a disadvantage that if we ever ran out of a 6CL6, you will not be able to buy a new one. That said, the 6CL6 brought with it a few problems. The first of all was the load resistance. Here you can see that for a class A amplifier is 7,500 ohm, which is uh, a lot more to what you will get from an EL84. Of course, my intention was not to use this as a class A amplifier, but as a class AB. So I went to draw the curves of the play characteristic using different kind of uh, output transformers. And as you can see, I draw it many times. Well, I just found all these, all these sketches. I don't know how many I throw out too, until I think this is the final one. And in the end, I settled on a 5K output amplifier. Here you can see in red the maximum power for the tube. This one is the 2.5K, which will be the load seen by the output tube for a 5 kilo ohm output transformer. And this long one is half that for a 300 volt plate voltage. But as you can see, if I utilize the suggested screen voltage of 150 volts, my load line will pass a lot over the knee of this curve. What you usually want for a tube amplifier is for this load line to pass a bit below the knee. So what I had to do, I had to raise the screen voltage. If we had a curve here, then the load line will pass right a bit below the knee. I made some uh, approximation and you can see here I pointed at 220 volts. 220 volts 
for the screen current will probably give me the curve I need. You may notice that 220 volts for a screen voltage is a pretty low voltage for an output tube. Usually what you will do is to have the screen voltage just slightly be low the plate voltage of your output tube. But here we have to go down 80 volts, let's, if uh, we suppose I have a 300 volts plate current. And that's also because this uh, cute 6 cr 6 have another interesting quirk. This chart. So this chart shows the area of permissible operation for the screen. Here we have the volts and here we have the screen dissipation in watts. The suggested screen voltage for an amplifier was only 150 volts. As you raise the screen voltage, you can dissipate less and less power. So by going to 220 volts, I got here to a maximum dissipation of about, let's say, 1.3 watts, which by my calculation is just right, just enough for not blowing up the tube. As you could see, there are lots of constraints about designing this 606 amplifier. To get a better load line passing below the knee, it basically forced me to raise the screen current above the suggested 150 volts. But by doing that, I cannot go too far because Otherwise, I will get into trouble with blowing up the screen of a tube because I will go uh, operating in this area right here. Now, the problem was that I wanted to have a higher plate current for the preamp tubes. So I ended up, for my amp, having a really unusual configuration where from the power transformer I go with the A to the output transformer and to the plates of the output tubes. Then with B I go to the phase inverter and the third preamp stage. With C I go to the first two preamp stages and only then after even more filtering I apply this uh, 224 volts to the screens of the output tubes. After setting on a generic design, I had to find the right power transformer. I search and search on uh, online auctions until I found the right one. This Pioneer 6BM8PP, which used to be a power transformer for a stereo receiver from I don't know which age, but this 3.3 kilogram transformer was the only one I could find that satisfied the current angry 6CL6 because another thing about the 6CL6 is that it's gonna suck up 30 milliamps of play current so I had four 6CL6 in my design so it makes 120 milliamps plus some extra screen current 7 milliamp so we are around already around 150 milliamps Plus, I was going to use the 1287, which also sucks up 10 milliamps by itself. So, as you can see, I was going to need easily around 200 milliamps for the high voltages. And that on top of a lot of current for the filaments. So, we have 0 0.65 amp for 4, which makes 2.6 amps. Plus, for the 1287, we have uh, 300 milliamps. It's like 3 amps, basically, of uh, current for the filaments. 
this power transformer will satisfy everything by using a full wave rectifier like you see in this helpful Hammond reference guide having a full wave capacitor input load I could get 205 plus 205 multiplied by 0 0.71 which is the V peak here but it's actually what you get in the end by using a good capacitor in my amp right now is 289 volts so that was worked out pretty fine and especially using this kind of full wave capacitor input you get the current to stay at a one-to-one -one ratio so you don't lose any current capabilities passing through this kind of rectifier that said, this power transformer at the right voltage, at the right current, for 6.3 volts, he had 3.6 and also a 3.3 amp, so for a total of 6.9 amps, plus a 5 volts 1.9 amp, which I ended up using to power the fan, which I'm gonna show later. So, at this stage, I found my tubes, I found my power transformer, then it became time to find an output transformer. What do you mean, Doc? All the best stuff is made in Japan. So for an output transformer, I went with this new Kasuga transformer made here in Japan, which has a 5 kilo ohm primary, 25 watts rating and on the secondary yes 4 ohm 6 8 12 and 16 ohm making it really versatile another thing i wanted to do is having a full power mod in my amp using all four output tubes and a half power mod which we will see didn't quite work out but the intention was that and to have a half power mod i needed more connection so when using the full four output tubes, I will connect the eight ohm speaker to the four ohm output of the output transformer. And when using only half the tube, I will connect to the eight ohm. And uh, if I have 16 ohm selected on the switch, I'm gonna have a full power, the eight ohm output connected. And at half power, I will have a 16 Ohm connection. So let's take a look at this beast of a power transformer. It's really massive. Here is the output transformer. Ah, here are the tube socket which I label now. And here are the main power filtering caps which are fairly big for such a small amp, but that's because of the high current requirements of the amp itself. Now let's flip the amp over, let's take a look at the guts of the amp, starting from the power section. So here is the power transformer. You can see my ear, my full wave rectifier going to the main filtering cups I fix them with uh, some uh, silicone and uh, basically all the power section happens here on these uh, eyelets which I don't know where I scavenge from might have come from even the same radio that gave me the parts for the mod I don't know anyway you can see the first stage of filtering second third and fourth stage of filtering these are the five volts rail of this power transformer i use it to power on this side the led this led you might have seen it used in some pedals it's really funny part uh, you can connect it in several different ways and actually to find the right way to connect is quite a challenge but once you found it it's a really cute led anyway here the 5 volts goes to here and then it goes to do, 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 this way the red and blue 
twisted wire it goes to here and that gives a 5 volts alternating current which I use to power a fan anyway going back to the power section we also have two 25 volts taps here and I use those to get some partial biasing for the output tubes as you can see it's con these two diodes this one and this one are reverse so I can get a minus uh, 25 volts DC which I then straighten up with this cap here and I bring it down with this 5.6 volt zener diode so our signal come here from the master volume pass from this cap we apply the bias voltage of minus 5.6 volts then we pass through this 1.5k grid resistor and then we go to the output tubes 1, 2, 3 gonna be this one and 4 gonna be this one probably let's take a look a second at how I design the biasing as uh, I told you before I had to imagine a curve right here as the zero from the screen voltage I selected I imagine it was about three volts away for purposes of biasing the output tube now I didn't know the exact biasing so I have a mixed biased output stage so basically these bigger ones their potentiometer shared by two output tubes at a time bypassed by these caps then I have this single potentiometer for each tube and these are not bypassed in the end you can actually see they're all set on the same values because I measured then uh, these four six L6 I chose they are pretty much identical to each other any measure I got were identical and so I set up everything identical and that's also why I'm not bothering much with uh, numbering the tubes of uh, the exact location of each tube now let's take a look at the filaments this is my filaments winding I tried to do a prettier job than with my previous amp as you can see I tried to make it run on the sides and then come down straight to each tube ah, here I had to make some adjustment because the way you power the 1287 is not the same as you power the 606 so I made some chaos there but I think everything were fine also here you can see the free anode grid and cathode connection of each preamp tube the idea was to just use these eyelets and this turret bore I had lying around for the power section while using this uh, perforated bore for the preamp section and mounting the screen resistor and grid resistor of uh, power tubes directly on the tubes as i found out point to point wiring that was required around this power tube was not really solid enough for me so i ended up adding this extra board with a lot of connection but just eight resistor why i chose a perforated board for the rest of the amp well, it's a good uh, compromise between uh, wiring the amp myself and being able to do a few changes here and there and compactness. If I try to lay out all this circuit using like turret or uh, some other kind of technique, I will never be able to fit all the components. So let's now talk a bit about the preamp stages. I have uh, three preamp stages I have a inverter which is a concertina style or cathodine phase inverter also we have a Marshall stack which was so hard to wire from scratch 
it's always so confusing wiring the pots the right way around and uh, oh my god it took me forever the master volume is also a double pot borrowed from the way the orange terror master volume work and it's after the phase inverter the other tone control i have is this bright control the bright control is based on what uh, uh, i think i never saw one in person but it's what brian wampler said he did with his bravado amplifier he said he, he had a, a rotary selector to switch between different bright caps around the uh, gain or volume pots and that's what i did i just wired it up it's a five position double rotary switch and i wired different caps depending on uh, the position going from no cap for darker to a large value at the brightest settings and uh, i will actually measure them and put in the schematics too also we have the half and full switch which cut the power in half so the way this switch is implemented it's a triple pole double throw so it does three things one it changes this led from red to yellow then it, it changes the output selection of the output transformer and then it cuts the ground connection from two of the output tubes so they are disabled but by cutting the output connection to the two output tubes it messes completely messes up the distribution of voltages around the amplifier especially the screen voltages which are so critical and i don't know it doesn't inspire me much confidence when this voltage which is already kind of borderline gets boosted up so i rarely if i ever use the half switch i prefer instead of using all the four output tubes and just lowering the master volume i think that's way better solution what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna write down the schematics in a better way then what i will do i will probably install a couple of potentiometer to tune the gain volume so that i can get a bit more volume on the lower side of the gain and get more crunch on the higher settings of the gain control so that will take me some time i will report later to you So I traced all the circuit, I found out in many places I lower the gain of the different stages like here, I lower the gain of the stage before the tone stack to lower the output impedance of the stage and I found out in this position I have this pot which basically pretty much control the overall gain structure of the amplifier i just tune a bit up i guess it was too conservative before and i found out that the double gain was only 500k double pot and in my stack of uh, weird things i found i have a one megabyte double gain at pot so i'm gonna substitute the gain with this uh, one meg pot and then i'm gonna retune this uh, resistance to ground to get the best results possible so i switched out the pots and now is the one meg ohm one we have a 3.3 mega ohm resistor we're going to what's now with a one mega ohm potentiometer and instead of being a connected to ground we have a 430 plus 500 kilo ohm resistor so basically we have a one mega ohm here to ground 
this limits the range of this control but still let us have a bit of influence on the voltages that reaches the phase inverter. Now I'm gonna put everything back together and then we're gonna run a real sound test. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. After some testing, I decided that the amp sounds okay. Now, as regarding the gain and the overall volume, but I'm still not happy with the half and full switch. And I think the reason why is because when I go from full to half and I unground two of the power tube, the overall power consumption of the amp drops and especially the voltage of the screen raises to 240 245 volts it completely screws up the biasing so what now i'm gonna do i'm gonna put a switch here and i'm gonna make it possible to alternate between this simple drop resistor and a transistor so i wired up this circuit around a high voltage linear voltage regulator the idea was promising and after tuning it a bit i was able to get some good results but the small TO92 package I had to get for the IC was only able to dissipate the amount of current he had to on paper. In reality, it was getting too hot. So while I could have probably fixed the problem by changing package or by adding some power transistor to supply the required current, in the end, as I already had a switch added anyway, I decided to just go the simplest route and I ended up with these bad boys. One and one, two. They are bundles of eight 68K resistor. They, they make exactly the equivalent of two 8.5K resistor. So I'm gonna install these in place of these two and hopefully I'm gonna get the exact voltage I'm looking for. Put it all back together. I surely hope I don't have to open this anytime soon. What's the problem? So I plug the amp in, I rock for 30 seconds and then Everything goes to shit because, look, a bolt is touching the switch that I added to change the screen current. Okay, I found a shorter screw. Now I'm gonna close everything up. Wish me luck. Seems like finally it's working fine. Yeah, you can see all the tubes light up in all their glory. It gets really hot and that's why I think the fan is like a necessity. It makes me A little bit less anxious about this thing blowing up anytime soon. One final thing I have to do. So I solved all the problem with the switches. I went ahead, I shot the demo of the amp, and I thought it sounded pretty good. And I'm still not happy. And I think the problem lies in this 
spot I called gain structure which comes after the tone stock. I have to bring this control on the outside. That's the only way to fine tune this control exactly to where I want it to be. So let's get to work. I don't think this uh, amp is never gonna be finished. Okay, I got my new character port installed and let's do this one more time.
So how did you find the video? Long and confusing? You're not the only one. It was really long to make. So what did we learn in uh, these three weeks of torture going over this amp and trying to improve it and fix it? Well, first of all, I barely touch upon it in the video, but a really important thing to always consider is grid leak resistors. Many of the misguided choices I did in other places in the design of amplifier were caused by problems I had in the beginning and most of these problems were caused by missing grid resistors or grid resistors that were not of a proper value. Another thing to consider, if you want to have this much switching going on in an amp, if I will have to build it again, I will probably try to use relays. Having everything uh, done in the same mechanical switch uh, make it really hard to keep the signal path clean. Then other thing I would have done different, maybe I wouldn't have used a double pot. I love double pots. I use it over time in my pedals and they were great. In this design of, uh, of an amp, was probably not really needed. I could have probably just tuned some potentiometer here and there to get rid some of the signal where it was too high. Linear voltage regulator as a way to tune the voltages inside the amp. I think it's a good idea. I just wasn't able to make it work this time. I had one more hour of footage where I was trying to work out uh, this uh, linear voltage regulator, but in the end it was just uh, a bit too hard to work out in this specific situation. If I thought it through better and used a bigger package and maybe it would have worked right away. Still is an idea worth considering I might use it again in a, some new project in the future. What about the half power switch? Yeah, it sounds okay, I think. It's a bit fizzy, but uh, sounds definitely better than before. But still, the four tubes full power mode sounds way better, especially when in the end I use no crunch for the amp or just a little bit. And that's also because my pedals still sound better than my amps at least for now so adding any of my pedals like a one no pony or a 2kp or a habu allows me to completely change a clean or slightly dirty amplifier in whatever i want with uh, many more versatile equalization option and all the stuff that said Maybe after all this amp is just a Celestion speaker away from being a really good marshall kind of amp. Thinking about it, if I would just spend the 100 bucks I need on a greenback, probably would bring me tone-wise where I really want to go with this amp. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. It was long. It was hard to make and uh, if you want to check out our t-shirts or of course our pedals please go to zenzelectronics.com or check us out on all the social media. Until next time, bye.